Hello everyone and welcome to the first of the six week health and wellness webinars by KD Corporate Wellness in conjunction with the ICB Aviation Skillnet. Today our presenters are high performance and executive coaches Jason Kenny and Declan Dorr from KD Corporate Wellness. Jason is a fitness and nutrition specialist, sports psychology coach um, and Jason Sorry, sorry, um, sorry. Apologies. Jason is a fitness and nutrition specialist, sports psychology coach, and has a BA degree in training and education. He's an active competitor, having represented Ireland abroad, winning several world, European, and Irish titles. He's also a martial arts instructor with over thirty years of experience. Bear that in mind when it comes to reviews. Declan is an inspirational trainer and executive coach, having recovered from a life-threatening brain injury where he was told he would possibly never walk, talk or use of, get use of his face again. Declan now teaches tools for mental wellness to survive and thrive in both your personal and professional lives. Today's topic area is self-talk and over the course of 20 minutes, Jason and Declan will share insights, tips and approaches to turning negative thoughts into positive ones and ultimately increasing your productivity. The ground rules for today are simple. Jason and Declan will present for 20 minutes with 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. Um, everybody is muted, but we do encourage everyone to supply questions via the chat function. If you hover over your screen, you should see that appear in the bottom or top of your screen. We'll also have one or two polls as the session goes on. So it'd be really great if you answered those because it gives us a very good sense of where people are at. And with no further delay, I'll hand you over to Jason and Declan. Thank you, Owen. We much appreciate it. A great introduction and hello to everybody. Uh, so yeah, this morning we're going to kind of go through all the stuff with regards uh, self-talk and about ourselves and about what, how we, we apply it to our own lives. Um, so bear with us and uh, at the end, obviously, we'll get some questions and, you know, we'll, we'll talk all about what we've discussed here today as well. So I suppose without further ado, let's kick off with the man himself, uh, Declan. He's a, a lovely story. He, Needs to tell, I think, and share with you guys today. Yeah, I suppose thank you all very much for, for being here. And I suppose before we get started, you might be um, just wondering the two of us are, are here together, side by side, uh, kneecap to kneecap. <laughs> and we, we actually live very, very close to each other and we, we practically work together every day. So uh, we're, we're not out and about, everyone's confined. And we, we just love the way technology is able to actually bring everybody together now. and. I suppose the self-talk starting off this process and this training uh, six-week module, we felt that the self-talk was very, very important for the first one. And we're going to be sharing our own stories briefly here, and it will be very relevant to what we're going to be training and teaching you here today. And with my own story, yeah, I fractured my own skull, shattered my temporal bone. I was told I'd probably never walk again, talk again, lost the whole use of the right side of my face. And really that showed me the power of self-talk because for me I wasn't being given much hope to survive and if it wasn't for my own internal dialogue and my own self-belief and my own self-talk I wouldn't be here today speaking or training with you so as we do the training here today we will dip in and out of our own story just briefly because it's a very short uh, zoom call but you'll see how we really do love the process of self-talk yeah, I suppose my own story is a little uh, different to Declan's. Um, I had a lot of time, I suppose, uh, in the fitness industry over many years, uh, along with all the other jobs and, and businesses that I was doing as well. Uh, unfortunately, over um, a period of time, then life started to catch up on me. Um, I spent more of my time uh, working towards everybody else rather than uh, concentrating on my own uh, personal health and well-being. Uh, as a result, I started to balloon up. Uh, you can see in the photograph on the, the left there, I ended up uh, looking like that. I was close to 18 stone and I'm only 5'7", so it was, uh, it was uh, an awful state I was in at that time. So um, I had a young child um, and kids actually, uh, two boys, and I, I just felt that I'm, I'm not going to be around for much longer if I continue this route, this path I was taking. Um, it got to a point where I had to sit myself down and give myself a good helmet readjustment and say, look, um, you've got to make a decision here. So it wasn't even around uh, looking good. It was absolutely nothing to do with that. Now I can assure you, for me, it was about changing that whole process, that whole talk that I was having myself, 
not about uh, wanting six packs tomorrow, but rather about being healthy and having a, a greater immune system and a, a more vitality. Um, so uh, a, a classic example of that and the result of that was that I always suffered from chest infections as a child. I always suffered uh, kind of ill health in that respect. And if anyone coughed or sneezed or anything like that, I was going to get it. Uh, that year, uh, my wife and uh, my son got a cough. And as a result, um, I didn't get it. And, and it was absolutely a, an eye opener for me and a, re a realization that my immune system had risen. Um, my defensive mechanisms were now in place. As a result of being consistent and, and so on and so forth, that was the result. I ended up changing my whole physique and how I look and how I am today. And has really, really, really helped me going forward. So that's kind of our, our kind of our stories. Um, what we really need to look at here today, I suppose, is that talk that was on our head, that negativity. And, you know, the stats will state that like over 70% of our talk every day is a negative talk. And those thoughts that we have to understand, we have to realize what's going on inside in our head and that inner critic, that bully, that person that we keep telling. I mean, we're not going to speak to somebody else that way. So why do we speak to ourselves in that way? Um, so it's very important that we um, realize how we actually communicate with ourselves. And sometimes we need to take a step back, look at it in a third person and realize, look, um, you need to be kinder to yourself. So, the, you know, when you think about it, you know, are we born with self-esteem or is it shaped in us? So I suppose it's, it's, it's a powerful question to ask. And, you know, Owen is going to put up a, a, a questionnaire there now. Do you think your body listens and responds to your thoughts? If you don't mind, you might just answer that and we'll just see where, where your thought process is in this. Is, do you think your body listens and responds to your own thoughts? So if you think about a little baby, does a little baby think, I hope no one smells my dirty nappy, or I hope no one will laugh at my baldy head? <laughs> and, Owen, oh, I hope you're, you're not thinking that still at this age. <laughs> no, with two daughters, they ground me extremely fast on that, so no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just going to uh, uh, share the, the poll results. Probably won't be too much of a surprise to you, but 100% for yes. Very, very good. Yeah, because it's, it's so, so powerful because whatever way you're thinking to yourself, it actually creates a chemical reaction within the body. And that chemical reaction can really cause chaos within the system of your body. It can cause, unfortunately, disease. It can cause sickness. It can cause depression. You know, it can cause many different elements. So thankfully, everybody's in the same same boat here and they think that. Yeah. So um, just moving on here quickly. Right. So so who shapes it then? I mean, like we have these. What, what are the factors that shape this? So even you can see on the right hand side of the slide there, you have family, <clears throat> you have possible teachers, you have the media, everything from Internet. And you know the way young people are today. Um, they're led and said by their friends and how many clicks they get. Uh, you know, we're all very much influenced, even though we kind of have a tendency to go, ah, no, 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 I'm my own person. A lot of the times we're not. We, we fall right into that path and that road. And if you look at some of the actual uh, people who are causing it or where it started from, initially it was probably your parents. Uh, don't do this, don't do that. Yes, no, right, wrong. I, I mean, this is, the, this is what's happening. Family members, your siblings, all the people that are surrounding us on, on, a, on a daily basis, in your, teach, or your classroom, as we said, in the, the teaching environment. So you can see there's a natural process every time um, with this. And what happens then is we become overwhelmed by how we should be rather than how we want to be and how we need to be. And we lose that beautiful creativity, like Declan mentioned there about the baby. I mean, <clears throat> you weren't really worried or concerned about it. Uh, back in the day and then suddenly everything is an issue suddenly you become fearful of saying such and such a things now there's nothing wrong with social etiquette obviously but just to free your mind and to try and do things and try and align it with the way you're thinking so instead of just even having a balance rather try and align it bring it into an alignment into and shape it into the way you're thinking and, and the way you're, you're working and going forward so if we're not born with it, that means we can, we can actually change it. That's the power behind all of this. 
So negative versus positive, you know, when it comes to thoughts, you have a lot of mind control. Your body listens and responds to your thoughts. So it's just like going back there and, and, and what we, we touched on. It's if whatever you're putting into your mind, whatever, whether it is negative or if it's positive, it's going to have a, a reaction and an action out of that. So it's important just to look at that and, and just see where you are. And your mental self-talk can go from a negative to a positive. So if you think about that, you can take it from a negative to a positive. And we're going to give you two examples here of that. And Jason's going to touch on the first one and then we'll, we'll, go, up, we'll go on to the, the next one then after that. Yeah, so just to look at it there, sorry about the slide there, just went back for a second. But so I suppose it's the typical one. Uh, you get called into the office, your boss has sent uh, an email going, is there any chance you come and talk to me in the office? And the first thing in your head going, oh, what did I do wrong? And like, you might have done nothing wrong. You might be 100% okay, but it's just the first thought that comes into your head. And I think this is why we were, we were, we started that poll as well, just so you understand that we all question ourselves, what if, or maybe I did this, or, you know, we don't give ourselves that luxury or that opportunity. And you can just see here from this, this example, um, it's, it's something we do on a daily basis and we just need to be so cognizant of it and we're not. And I think what we're really trying to do with you guys today is to try and get you to separate yourself almost the minute you start to realize and feel those. Um, and we're, we're, if you're not training yourself to do it, then you're never going to recognize it. But you do talk to yourself all the time. Okay, so to look at the positive side of it. Yeah, even in sports psychology, you know, an athlete is taught to, to, to stay positive. I, I remember me as a, as a young, young lad uh, when I was playing sport, it was always embedded into my own mind first and process that I wanted to be the best uh, athlete on the field. I wanted to be the top goal scorer. You know, it was all, I was always visualizing and talking to myself and that mentality of wanting to actually be the best athlete I could be. And I remember every single year I used to write down my goals for what I wanted to be. And that was be the top goal scorer in the team and the top goal scorer in the league. And every year I was always the top goal scorer. But that's because of my, my positive self-talk. I was always visualizing and seeing as if it already had happened. And it was the same in my recovery when I was in the hospital. I was always in the hospital every single day, seeing myself walk, seeing myself talk, seeing myself getting my face back. So I was visualizing this outcome and putting a positive affirmation and positive self-talk in every single day so wherever you might be now in your your process remember that that you have the power you have the control to implement into your mind what you want to put in there yeah so okay just 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 so what happens when you start to take on a positive approach and you start to flip it on its head and um, the first thing that happens is is your confidence starts to rise um <clears throat> this is really important to understand because when you have that confidence, you're automatically uh, a little bit more driven, a little bit more focused on things. Um, you feel a bit more, look, I can deal with this situation. And given even the current uh, crisis we're going through in Ireland and across the globe, uh, this pandemic, um, people are forced into uh, a situation that they wouldn't have normally been in. Or we've just literally been put on a pause. Uh, the pause button has been pressed. We've all had to stop. We've had to reevaluate things, and now we're we're looking at it how we can we we can fix this. So as a result, we start to juggle things around. We start to structure things. So we start to improve our performance. Um, also, then our mental skills improve. It starts to increase all these um, abilities in us that we didn't have, um, or we we actually did have, but we didn't um, isolate and amplify in in the past. So remember, negative thinking damages them. So if you are, after doing all this visualization or writing down all these goals, just think about this for a second. If you've written all this down and you're planting all these positive seeds in your own mind, and then all of a sudden you go, uh, I don't think that will work, or no, that won't happen. The minute you do that, you, you press delete. You've literally pressed delete and you've erased all that good stuff that you've implanted into your mind. So it's important when you're actually doing this self-talk process that you literally believe without doubt that it's gonna happen for you and it's gonna come about for you. It's a key, key component. And just on that, I mean, even for my own competitive uh, time, 
I used to spend my time uh, competing against others. It was only when I stopped and I said, no, I need to compete against myself. I need to be better than I was the last time. And, and when I started to do that, I started to win because it was me I focused in on. And that was one of the key areas. I was just so worried about what everyone else was doing and not focusing in on the, the task at hand. So mornings, I'm sure, like Owen touched on earlier on about, you know, about wanting to be more positive in the morning, of, especially of a Monday morning. You know, I think we all go through that. We all wake up in the morning and we all just sometimes have a morning. And maybe it could be every morning where we're like, oh, I just want to hit the snooze button. I don't want to get up. You know, for instance, if you say you aren't a morning person, your subconscious brain will reinforce that idea. So if you think about that, if you keep telling yourself, I'm not a morning person, I'm not a morning person, guess what's going to happen? You're not one, you're not, you're going to be a person who does not like the mornings. Yeah, and likewise, if you're told something, um, even as a child, this is a great example, and I was only talking to Declan earlier about it. My own mother um, was petrified of dogs, and uh, I was living in Spain for a couple of years, and uh, I, they came over on holidays, and on our way down in a motorway, I, I just uh, subtly told her that, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I bought a dog. So there was silence in the car, um, and we were driving along the motorway. She couldn't get out now, obviously. She was trapped. So I said to her, I said, look, if there's an issue with the dog, there's no problem. I, I had an English school at the time over there. Uh, I said I can put the dog down into the school and we can go in and out and, and let the dog out for a walk every day or whatever. But uh, so we're driving along. And the next thing is uh, she says to me, um, um, what, what kind of a dog is it? And I said, ah, it's only a puppy. It, it's very young. It's only eight, nine months old. And she said, oh, right, right, right. And we were getting closer. And she, you could see the questions were there in her mind. And her mind was in overdrive. Oh, this is going to end badly. This is terrible. And I, she said to me, oh, what kind of a dog is it? And I said, it's a Rottweiler. And she went white. The face strained. And she just stayed quiet. And I said, look, if there's an issue, whatever. So we got into the house. Anyway, now I had been training, in fairness, the dog the whole time and doing a lot of work with it. And got to the house anyway, and we were inside, and uh, she was avoiding the dog for the first day or so. And then my father calls me. He goes, hey, hey, I mean, you have to see this. There was my mother sitting at, on the sofa, and she was like this with the dog. And the dog was really good now. You're just sitting there and just minding its own business and just accepting the rub, never in anyone's space. Two days later, my mother um, said to me when I was out walking, we were walking with the family, and she says, uh, can I, can I walk the dog? And I go, yeah, absolutely. So she starts to walk the dog. Three weeks later, when they got home, they started looking at buying a dog. And four weeks after that, they bought their very first dog and they've had dogs ever since. And that was a woman who was petrified of uh, animals. So you can see just by environment, just by changing the whole process and aligning it with something that's positive, you can retrain the brain. <laughs> so what can you do today to help create a positive self-talk routine and retrain your brain? So what we're going to do before we wrap up here is give you five tips on how to do that. And the first one is, and if you look at the picture, the picture, as they say, speaks a thousand word, languages or words, whatever you want to look at it. If you can focus on solutions, not problems, and reframe your inner critic. So Wherever you might be, whatever might be going on for you right now, and look, there's a lot going on for everybody, unfortunately, right now. And some people might say, oh my God, it's hard to think positive now with everything that's going on. But if you can look at your own environment and reframe it and, and, and kind of go, okay, what good can come from this? Mm -hmm. And there's many different things and good things that can come from this for us if we focus on that rather than you know, keeping the blinkers on, have an open mind, and you know, being on this call even here is, is, is great and shows you know, yourself that you're wanting to learn more for you to improve yourself, which is, which is really good. So think about that, focus on solutions, not problems. Yeah, so I suppose something that we're really um, uh, big on is journaling. So there's something about having those thoughts, taking them from your brain and putting them onto a piece of paper and writing them down. It's it's incredible process. It, it's almost as if you're emptying something. It's really powerful as well, even if you have something going on for yourself. To even write yourself a letter and speak to yourself in third person sometimes, it's, it's the most powerful thing you can ever do. 
take that piece of paper and then fire it away. It's almost as if you've physically taken that negativity and thrown it away. But to write stuff down also, as I said, goes back to that creativity, goes back to that inner child and starts to look at not technology where that starts taking over because you know yourself, the minute you're on a phone and you, you start writing stuff into your phone or whatever, an email comes in, a text message comes in, there's a phone call, you're gone. Your, your whole process, your brain has moved off. Whereas if you're taking that and you're writing it on a piece of paper, you take the phone, turn it upside down, put it in silent and start writing. What flows from there is so powerful. It, it's one of the most powerful tools that you can have today. And number three, it's a stress buster. Now, if you think about it this way, have you ever seen a lion chasing a gazelle? Okay, even if you haven't, Google it. It's the most fascinating thing you'll ever see and try and apply this to your own life right now even. If you look at a lion chasing a gazelle, the lion is hungry, it's looking for food. If you look at the gazelle, it's running and it is stressed off its head, wanting to get away and survive this attack. And if you look at what happens if the gazelle survives, the lion has stopped, the gazelle stops as well, and all of a sudden the gazelle takes a break. And if you look at what happens, and this can be very relevant to you right now in your life or whatever goes on in your life, if it's a stress buster, the gazelle takes a breath, it shakes itself out, and then it kind of looks and just takes off smiling. It literally just runs away and takes off. But if you look at what it does is, and apply this to your own life, when something stressful happens in your life, take a breath, come back to you, breathe in, and release it. So even right now, just for 10 seconds, if you can all just try this routine, okay, whatever's going on for you, take a breath, hold, and then release. And as you're releasing, try and put something into your mind that's positive. So you take the breath, instill something positive into your mind, and then release whatever might be going on for you. And if you can just try that out when you are in a stressful situation, always come back to your breath. We are huge into that. It's always try and come back to your breath, release what might be going on, and then move forward. Yeah, it's very powerful. I mean, the U.S. Marines use it. Uh, anyone in, in, in a situation where you're under serious pressure, breathing. If you start to feel stressed, you automatically your breathing starts to change. Your tightness in the chest, your heart rate increases. So think about that. If you can re control that, if you can get it right back to where, what Declan was saying, you start to deep breaths, hold for that second and release, it releases all that tension. And on a positive note, the more oxygen you take in, the more fat you burn. <laughs> okay, so look, let's look at number four. So reminders on your phone and on your computer, um, you can use them, we talked about using uh, technology as a negative, but now let's look at it as a positive. So, um, Declan talks about it. We have a, a bit of fun, a bit of a bit of crack. We talk about the, the, the ding dong, um, and we just put it on a, a, a reminder for ourselves that we give ourselves a particular amount of time to work on a particular uh, subject or particular topic. So if I'm having a conversation with someone, I put it on for maybe five minutes or ten minutes or twenty minutes, whatever that may be. And just before it happens, I I know that it's now time to start wrapping that up because it allows us that little bit of time to be, be more free and more productive throughout our day. It also allows us time to spend with other people as well. So um, even another example yeah. would be in your phone, put in little triggers. So what I mean by trigger your positivity is trigger a message in your phone to come up at maybe two o'clock in the day or four o'clock in the day or even nine o'clock in the morning. Something that actually the phone gives you an alert to say, no, how is my self-talk right now? Mm. What can I do to feel better right now? And then, you know, it's just something to give you a trigger to go, okay, actually my self-talk is negative. I need to replace it with something positive. You know, simple little things like that. Mm. And last but not least. Yeah, going back to the journal. It is the gratitude list. It's, it's yeah. Joanne, you can talk about this, Declan, actually, because this is uh, something, uh, Declan has created a, uh, uh, a lovely diary that it is, it's now uh, worldwide and it's on Amazon and it's, it's quite it's quite readily available. 
Uh, and one of the things on it, and I found amazing, was one thing that I used to do, but Declan has it highlighted at the very end of it. It's just to be thankful at the very end of your day to write down something positive, something that you're very grateful for. Um, that, because when you go to yeah. bed, you see the thing, when you go to bed at night, if you can go to bed at night, the last thing before you go to sleep is something positive. You're putting something into your mind, so you're going to sleep thinking of something positive or thinking of the following day, visualizing your following day, or writing it down, especially before you go to sleep, things you're grateful for. When you wake up in the morning, write down things you're grateful for. You're automatically kicking in your own process of mm. positive self-talk, and you're reaffirming things that are good in your life rather than turning on the news or going to your email straight away. Try and fuel yourself first thing in the mm. morning and last thing at night with something positive. So powerful because like Declan said, in the, you're winning the first hour that morning, that's yours, you own it. Don't give it to anyone else, you take your time. If it means getting a burger, just get a burger. And the last thing in the evening, mm. turn off that phone, turn off the computer, turn off the TV, make it yours, it's incredible. And just a very quick story on that. I remember we had a power cut in the house and um, basically, obviously, there was no electricity, nothing. So everyone was like, oh, what are we going to do? And I remember the kids and everything, everyone in the state of panic. But the most amazing thing started to happen. Everyone sat around the fire. We started to talk and telling stories and having a bit of fun. The kids absolutely loved it. It was the most amazing environment. What do I do once a month? <laughs> I tell the kids the electricity is gone and we kill the power. We sit around, we tell stories and we have fun. Absolutely amazing. And just there then, Owen, thank you for putting that up. Out of the five tips, which one will you implement straight away after this training? You know, you might focus on the solutions, not the problems. You might ink it, don't think it. You might use the stress cluster, come back to your breath, and reminders in your phone or computer to trigger you positively. Maybe you might write a daily gratitude, or you might implement all five. So. Which out of those will you utilize? And I don't know if the responses have come back yet. They have indeed. I'll just finish the poll in three seconds. Let's get the last few. The temptation to uh, click all five is immense. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll just end the poll and share it with you. And apologies if I've missed any. If anyone's any questions, please put them into the chat function now. This will be interesting to see. Focus on solutions, not problems. Love it. Stress busters. Very good. Okay, nice. the stress busters and the solutions, not problems. Brilliant. Really, really good. Love it. And it's like if you can focus on the solutions, not we all have problems and we all come across negativity and we all face internal self talk negativity every day of the week. But if you can put a trigger in there and go, okay, I, I, I can see I have a problem. Okay. I have the problem, but flip it and go, where is there a solution to this problem? If you can retrain your brain that way to just flip it around and go, there's a solution to this problem, it will do wonders for you. And not just even with your own self-talk, but for your own health, for your own well-being, because now you're not focusing on creating that stress. You're focusing on how can I get a solution to this problem? So that's great. Super, super stuff. Right, so some, some questions have come in. Could I start question by, um, uh, you know, these are really pragmatic tips on what to do. And it's, you know, quite a bit of change management. It's people changing how to currently do things. And the temptation to fall back into bad habits is immense. Have you any tips in terms of um, getting these things ingrained so that they become automatic rather than something you remind yourselves in six months' time when everything's falling apart. Well, Any said, tips for how to how to get it totally ingrained in what you do and how you think? As you can imagine, in a 20-minute conversation, it's hard to go into the depths. There's obviously a lot of depth in what we're speaking about, but to start the process straight away is to create a daily routine. Consider Consistency is everything. It's a daily routine. Even going back to the trigger on your phone, like that can be a huge reminder. If you put in a daily reminder on your phone at whatever certain times in the day, this is what I do still. I still do this every single day where I have a timer and it goes off every every three times during the day and it just re-triggers and re-fires and rewires my own mind and creates the, the routine. Yeah, and a very a very good one I use as well. And just 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 on that on um start with one thing, one thing today. And stick with that. Yeah. And then 
I have a thing that I put up, it's called an accountability mirror, and post it's all over it, and you put it in front of it, and you have something positive, some affirmations, you remind yourself what you have to do. You all gotta stand in front of the mirror when you're brushing your teeth, combing your hair, or just you're gonna look at yourself. <laughs> but, you know, look for places that it's gonna be really obvious, opening the fridge door, whatever it is for you, whatever works for you, make it very simple and workable. And become aware. I think the key here, Owen, as well, is you have to become aware of what's going on for you when you're having these thoughts. You know, because we all have negative thoughts. Like, we all do. And it's just a matter of when that negative thought comes up, be aware of it, rather than just actually going into the negative thought and just, you know, literally pulling yourself down into that process and then trying to flip it around. It's trying to get the flip like a switch. Easier said right. Um, easier I know, no, but, but actually just picking one thing makes a difference rather than trying to do all five and then not getting any of them done. Um, question here from Maeve, which is, Jason Declan, at a time when we are surrounded by so much negativity and bad news, what should our main fo areas to focus on to stay positive? Hmm. Go for it, Jason. Yeah, uh, obviously, I mean, your health is the most important thing uh, right now. You to be at optimal health is to be at optimum for everyone else around you. It's a domino effect. So you need to take a step back, give yourself a bit of self-love. And that's not about being uh, selfish or mean. It's literally about, it's actually self-care. Um, just make sure that you're okay, you're grounded, and you know what you have to do. Structure your day. Uh, start from the, the morning right through to the evening. Have an idea in your mind of what it is you want to do for today and structure it in. Pencil in time for everyone and everything you're, you're, you have ahead of you for the rest of the day. And you know what? It's time as well to look at the changes that are happening from a positive point of view. Uh, look outside, the world is changing and things are slowing down. And sometimes, uh, you know, as Robin Sherman says and, and, and Declan knows, as can be heard saying it on many occasions, sometimes we have to slow down to speed up. And it's so important to just take a back step and to do that. And one, one more thing on top of that then would be, what I found happening me is, and then, and like, I'm, 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 I'm very good at minding what comes into me, my thought process and being aware of that. But what I found the last couple of weeks for me, even, I found myself getting really negative because I, got, I found myself being pulled into social media and I was in social media for, oh my God, I don't know how long I was in social media and I'm looking at all these negative posts and yes, there's negative things happening out there. But I was feeling it anxious i was feeling stressed i was i just didn't feel good i didn't even want to exercise i didn't even want to get out and get some movement into me and i usually do that every day and it was about three or four days into all this i, I found this was happening to me and i'm like dick what are you doing so i found only in the last couple of days i've cut myself back in social media got out moving again i feel so much better because of that but it's so easy to fall into that loop. So that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, allow yourself maybe five, ten minutes at the end of the day if you want to, to to research what's going on. I mean, I do it now. My wife will tell me, and I don't even I don't even know how many people have it. Uh, the coronavirus now in Ireland. I I think it's close to five thousand, maybe. I don't know. But it, you know what? If you're going to keep looking at that, it's going to keep increasing. The horror stories coming in. There's a bit of scaremongering as well. Uh, I think the most important thing is. You have, you're safe, you're in your home, you're locked yeah. in, but you are safe. I see it with my mom even. My mom, she's amazing, but she rings me nearly every day now telling me the bad news. She wants to ring me and feed me all this bad news. Well, it's come to a stage where she rings me and I'm like, Mom, if it's bad news, please hold it. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, and that can be very toxic as well. It's really... It's, it's as we call it. It's, it's the the suckers, the time suckers, energy, the, vampires. energy vampires. You know they can pull it, and they're the most uh, people closest to you, the loved ones. So oh, great. You. Okay, well, listen. Thank you very much. There's a um, huge amount of insight, but also a lot of honesty because this stuff isn't easy. You have to kind of constantly, it's not that you do it and then you're perfect. You have to keep at it. It's like exercise. And so really, really appreciate those. And um, just a, a matter of housekeeping next week, because next Monday is Easter Monday. Um, we'll have this, this session will be held on Tuesday. And next week's topic is how to be more productive, but it's on Tuesday instead of the usual Monday. And then we move back to the, the Monday afterwards. The video and the slides um, will be available later up on, on the ICB website later on today or tomorrow. 
And finally, thank you to Jason and Declan for, for those insights. I know there's about four of those things that I'll be trying out today. I might go try to go beyond my one, but I will keep that advice, stick to one, do it well. Um, and to everyone else who showed up today, thank you very much. I hope you got something from it and look forward to seeing you after Easter. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. All the best. Stay safe. Okay. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.